Hi there, this is uh, Kirk Kasanowski, and welcome back to our regular blog. Is today I want to talk with you about, you know, does your organization have the culture to support positive growth? I've, I've written and talked about this in the, in the past. It feels an important topic, so I want to drill down a little bit more today about that. You know, most organizations say they want to grow, but not every organization does or is willing to do what is necessary to grow. You know, when an organization starts experiencing uh, stagnation and growth or loss of market share, they, they look at the environment and blame the environment. Well, it's competition, it's a regulatory change, it's our customer base loyalty shifting a little bit, etc. And, and while these may be true, I submit to you that the biggest barrier to growth is internal. And I call it those invisible velvet gloves on the spigot of growth. There are several things that are occurring internally you can't even see that is affecting your growth. And I've, like I said, I've talked about this before a little bit. And every organization has these signs and symptoms they can see, measure, and feel that will let them know where their growth is going. And whether it's you know hospice, home care, hospitals, et cetera, there's, uh, um, every industry has them. The examples I'm using today relate to hospice. But as we go through these, I'm sure you can uh, interchange what relates to your organization best. So for hospice, you know, one of the first ones are the uh, rate of not taking under care cases. Those NTUCs that are high, if you have a high NTUC rate and you really have no reason for why you're NTUCing, that is a sign and a symptom, folks. Uh, two is a very low 90-day rolling uh, referral inquiry to admission rate. If it's below 70%, there's something going on. Thirdly is a high revocation rate, uh, which is an indication of some service issues. You know, thirdly is if you have if not enough uh, admission staff, if you're budgeted for 25 admissions a month and you can't identify the specific uh, staffing, scheduling piece that's going to make that happen, it'll never will happen, ergo you have a self-fulfilling prophecy of not growth. And then lastly, in this specific example, is a sales and marketing team that aren't really buying into the structure and process of what professional salespeople should do. These are five examples, and there are many more in hospice uh, organizations. And I'm sure as you think about your own organization, I'm sure you can come up with some specific things uh, that are going on. Um, an organization uh, we can't just jump up and say, you know, we need to grow. A leader just jumps down and says, we need to grow. We're putting in place processes to uh, achieve growth. Nor is growth going to occur if you task an individual or an apartment for growth. It's funny, I work with a, a hospice company, a very successful hospice company. Man, we did more census calls, we looked at more data, we did more this, more that, and we hit a wall and stopped growing. And this specific uh, organization looked at the trees as opposed to the forest and looking at a culture of growth. So what's an organization to do? The more important part here, folks. And that's what I want to spend a little bit of time chatting with you about. The detail is below uh, the video in a narrative, so you can really digest that. But the first thing is top-line support. And you hear that all the time. But a, a Harvard Business Review article uh, a couple months ago said that 81% of the organization surveyed, this is all industries, indicated that their top management really didn't support the growth initiatives, nor did they understand them completely, which is setting the organization up for failure. You know, the second piece you want to look at installing is a, uh, the old, my old quality assurance background here is a PDCA, a plan, do, check, act, uh, improvement cycle. Those five programs or those five symptoms I mentioned above, you know, the NTUC issue and the admission, et cetera, each one of those symptoms needs to be quantified and then having a PDCA cycle put in place, a small inter interdisciplinary group that can come together and work through these issues. It creates teamwork. And guys, it's the collective wisdom of the organization that is going to achieve its growth targets and create a culture of growth. Then the third piece is, you know, as you reflect back to your college days and any management classes, you had, you know, the basically 101 change management process. Because what we're talking about here is changing the culture to support a culture of growth. And as I indicated, the narrative below goes into a lot of detail. I'm not going to sit down and read all the specifics now, but I just want to review it quickly again to really change culture and to create a culture growth that stops with, starts with top management support, understanding support and involvement in the growth initiatives. Two is really looking at the collective wisdom in the organization and putting in place plan, do, check, act, a little mini groups to work on specific uh, challenges that you're having. And then three, really looking at a change management process and embracing that and working through uh, that in your organization. And I'm sure if you commit to that, and it is a commitment, that your organization will continue to serve more people and grow. And with that, I wish you a uh, good day and take care. Thank you.